Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-4. When last we heard from the party, they had discovered that Welby had given the package to the wrong person and had inadvertently started a tavern brawl. After a brief investigation, they find themselves in the back corridor of the Dockside Brewery to meet with Johan the Lone Shark. We return with the party making their way to a door at the end of the hallway. The rat-faced man fumbled with some keys as the group formed a single line behind him in the back passage of the business. Without warning, men sprang out from both sides holding blades against the group. One swarthy man touched his blade to the bottom of Fargus's chin and said, Don't move, big man, or I'll cut you right down to size. The group lifted their hands in surrender and the men relieved them of their weapons. One of the guards got a little handsy with Lady Irena and she slapped him away. He raised his dagger angrily as she defiantly stared him down. Enough, exclaimed the man, leading them to the doorway. Do you have any weapons, dearie? She produced a thin dagger and handed it to the man who had assaulted her, then showed her open hands, indicating there was nothing else. Fine, as he knocked on the door and received a muffled come in. The door opened to reveal a large, ornate desk with a red-headed dwarf sitting behind it. Two enormous men flanked him and appeared to be of ogre descent. The dwarf guzzled down some alcohol in a golden goblet and barked at the party what they wanted. Welby touched his own face, hoping that the dwarf would notice that his thick beard was covered in drops of rum, but did not. As Johann spoke, he sprayed spittle across the desk. I'm Johann, who the hell are you? The group looked at each other before Cabe pushed his way forward and bowed dramatically. Greetings and salutations, all-powerful Johan. It is our pleasure to meet you. We come before you to retrieve an item that has accidentally found its way into your possession. A small box. No value, really. We ask that it be returned as it was lost due to a case of mistaken identity. The stout dwarf listened to the half-elf and then examined the faces of the rest of the group. You're full of shit, came the reply from the dwarf as he guzzled more liquor and had his goblet refilled by one of the large men behind him. Cabe stammered to explain and defend his position, but the dwarf belched and raised his gauntleted hand. You expect me to believe that the five of you came armed to meet me with whom you have never met for something that is of no value. I say... You are full of shit, at which Cabe slunk back into the group. The cleric Elaine moved forward and bowed quickly. Mr. Johan, I am Sister Elaine, Reverend Daughter of Dilo the Almighty. We are not full of shit, to some extent. Our associate, politely pointing to Welby, was set to deliver the box to an individual on the docks, but mistook a man with the same name. The box was given to an associate of yours who gave you the box in exchange for something. We would ask for it back out of kindness. The last part caused the bodyguards to laugh out loud exhibiting missing and mangled teeth as Johan sat unimpressed. <sighs> Thank you, Reverend Daughter. Your honesty has swayed me, said the dwarf. The group smiled, but Johan continued. I would like to give you this box of unknown value, but I already paid a considerable sum for its ownership. I am willing to give the box back on, on a single condition. Pensively, the group held their collective breaths. I have an individual that owes me a debt, possibly worth more than this bobble, as he produced the box in his hand. If you can bring me this individual, I would be happy to return the item to you and let you go on about your way at no cost. The group bristled and Lady Irena confirmed that it was only one person. The dwarf laughed and shook his head. 
Five to one odds. Should be a piece of cake for adventurer types like yourselves. Who is this individual that you seek? She continued. Johan explained that the man's name was Kelsey, a deserter from the Pardorian forces, and he was a bit larger than Fargus and had a large scar along his chin that parted his beard at a strange angle. Fargus seemed unconvinced, pointing out that the area was full of people probably matching that description. Johan took the comment under consideration and yelled for Dworky, and the rat-faced man appeared groveling. Yes, boss, hissed the man. Johan explained that the group had been given the task of finding Kelsey, causing the man to chuckle. The laugh turned to a look of fear when the dwarf told him that they would be helped by him. Me, boss? But but I didn't, said Dworky, until he was cut off by the loan shark. You will help this motley group find Kelsey so that they can bring him to me, dead or alive. Do you understand, Dworky? This caused the timid man to cower in fear and grovel. A broad smile crossed the dwarf's face as he put the mysterious box away. There, you have it. Simple job. Simple reward. Now leave. I have other business to attend to. And he waved them away as the twin guards moved towards the party. Dworky hissed that the party should follow him and led them back outside as the sun reached its zenith. The mousy Dworky began to mutter to himself about having to deal with Kelsey, causing the group to look at each other. Dworky whirled around and motioned for a man at the door who walked over and dumped a blanket on the ground before going back to the door. Grab your weapons and be quick about it. We don't need no attention from Looky Loos. You follow me, you do as I say, we find Kelsey, and you guys do your thing and you get your stupid box back. Party members rearmed themselves quickly and Welby grabbed the blanket, spinning it around on his shoulders. The group followed the rat-faced man around Dockside as he visited several locations and spoke with several seedy-looking individuals. At the leather worker's shop, he spoke in hushed tones with the proprietor before exclaiming, You gotta be kidding me! The shopkeeper shook his head and Dworky grabbed the sides of his dirty face, pulling it down in disgust. Come with me, as he stomped out onto the muddy road to the very end where the guards were present and a man was in a set of stocks. Dworky approached the man and the guards gripped their weapons, causing the loan shark's lackey to show his hands were empty. Dworky pulled the man's hair up and spat on the ground angrily. <sighs> Kelsey! Ah, rats! Johan wants to have a word with you. The prisoner quickly spat on Dworky's face and laughed loudly. Tell him to come see me in the gulag, because that's where I'm headed. The lackey cleaned off his face and stepped away, returning to the group who waited for word on the plan. The idiot has gotten himself arrested and is headed into the prison in Phoenix. We'll never get him out of there. The group questioned Dworky on a plan of action, who threw up his hands. You don't understand. It's over. We'll never get him out for the boss. He'll be moved this afternoon into the city, where he'll be out of reach. We got nothing, and this job is over, and you ain't getting your box. The group looked at the prisoner and back to the guards who were starting to file inside the station for a meal. Fargus thought for a moment and watched the other guards go in. Look, most of the guys are leaving for lunch and that leaves the most inexperienced guards out here with this jackass. Let's just jump them, grab this guy, and make a run for it. The group looked at him and Lady Irena spoke first. Kill the guards and grab the guy? That's your plan? Are you an idiot? The rest of the group chimed in, complaining that the guards would be on them too fast and they would all end up incarcerated or worse. After taking several minutes of verbal abuse for his, from his compatriots, he settled them down. Not kill, just knock out. How about we wedge the door on the barracks and that would give us a few minutes to get this oaf out of the stocks and back to Johan. Simple. The party thought about the situation for a few minutes before Irena spoke up. You know, I may have a spell to deal with the two guards that won't hurt them, and may buy us some time. If Cabe and Farkas can secure the door, and the holy woman, Dworky and Welby, can secure the criminal, we can make our escape. The group looked at each other 
with Dworky casting doubt on the plan, but was outvoted. I'd best not end up in the stocks because of you idiots. I'm in. Everyone nodded and moved into position. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.